Why do we listen to economists who use theories that contribute to the destruction of people's jobs and which cause chaos in the economy? One spectacular failure was the inability of the OECD to forecast the financial crisis of 2008. Their chief economist came here, the Bloomberg headquarters in London, to spill the beans about the gaping hole in their dodgy model of the economy. Prediction is very difficult, especially if it's about the future. Let me add more, much more modestly that it's particularly true with economic forecasts. The OECD post-mortem admitted that the macroeconomic models available at the time of the crisis typically ignored the banking system. In the 20 years leading up to the bankruptcy of the banks, financiers were celebrated for creating jobs and wealth, and yet the OECD refused to include an assessment of the impact of all that activity on the global economy. When the crisis began to bite, we uh, revised our forecast down a number of times, both for 2008 and 2009. And the outcome, the outturn, was clearly worse than uh, forecasted, especially in 2008. We also did not perform extremely well in terms of recovery. In the four years in which we thought a recovery was coming, we made mixed mistakes. The right-hand side diagram shows how the current recession is still far away from getting out of uh, the slump with respect to previous recoveries. So we are witnessing something which is deeper, stronger, and clearly much more complicated than previous recessions to understand. I'm saying this, sounds obvious now, I'm saying this because I feel that some of the lessons we have learned, and I'll come to that in a minute, is exactly about not forgetting that the economic mechanism which leads to recession and recoveries may be much more complicated than we tend to think. And but if the world is too complicated for economists, that's because they ignore key drivers of the global economy. At the time the forecast was made, we did not use all the available information. And this, I think, is a very general lesson that one should draw from the crisis. The crisis, if we go back with the benefit of hindsight, uh, came up through a number of mechanisms, stability generating mechanisms, which were, could have been uh, ob observed and policymakers or forecasters and of course international organization could have been made better use of the information available then. We need to get uh, much more into the business of introducing financial markets and financial market impacts on the way the economy performs. Uh, we need to uh, recognize better linkages and spillovers. Not that we uh, were not aware that the global world is interconnected. The real issue is that we do not fully understand how interconnectedness operates. I invited Mr. Padoan to identify vital parts of the economy which the OECD was still ignoring. He did not reveal the other holes in their models. The OECD still bases its assessments on statistics that are fatally flawed. I went to California to meet an economist who is a leading authority on official statistics that conceal what really happens in the economy. Mason Gaffney is Emeritus Professor at the University of California. Uh, Simon Kuznets, who uh, pioneered uh, national income accounts in the 1930s and, and then during World War II, has uh, disavowed them. He said the national income as it's measured currently is not a measure of uh, public welfare in any meaningful sense. It was designed to uh, define our capacity to build munitions 
and uh, draft soldiers to fight the war. Among other things that it left, left out were depletion of natural resources. In the last 30 or 40 years, conservationists have seized upon these weaknesses, and many of them have gotten together and tried to create a new system of national accounts. Meantime, government has not changed a thing. What we call the national income accounts, as calculated by the U.S. Department of Commerce, is based on the same concepts that Simon Kuznets used in World War II and later disavowed, saying they were not a measure of national welfare. Economists who were too lazy to do their own work or too busy or whatever, they are seeking a number. So they grab the numbers that the federal government gives them or the numbers that the National Bureau gives them uh, or numbers from various other supposedly authoritative sources. They shouldn't do that. These numbers have to be interpreted, they have to be massaged. Of course they have been massaged, but they've been massaged the wrong way. They make no serious effort to measure depreciation accurately. Now depletion is when natural resources are exhausted or polluted. Depreciation is when man-made capital wears out, which of course it is constantly doing. But to measure the rate at which a building wears out calls for some sophisticated thinking. And that thinking was so either so sophisticated or led in the wrong directions, I don't know which, that no national income accountant has seriously attempted to come up with reasonable measures of depreciation of fixed capital. Not to mention obsolescence, which is uh, unpredictable and, and uh, chaotic, really. There are several kinds of depreciation. One of them, which is constantly overlooked, is uh, the depreciation of buildings caused by the appreciation of the land underneath the buildings. That's called locational obsolescence. A building may be perfectly sound as a structure, as an engineering concept, and yet if the land underneath it ripens into a different use, uh, that building has no residual value. The real estate would be worth more if the building were torn down and the land were put to a different use, its highest and best use. We see this in horticulture all the time. I'm surrounded by citrus trees, which are obsolescent because the land under them is worth more for residential purposes or commercial or industrial purposes than it is for growing citrus. Uh, that's locational obsolescence. Uh, the national income accounts are very little value until things like that are taken into account. And they haven't been, and there's no sign that they're going to be, because there's no force in the federal bureaucracy or in the Congress that wants to get that information out. It would uh, have implications about how the tax system should be changed with more emphasis on land value. So until we get an appreciation of the value of that kind of reconstruction to the national accounts, uh, we're stuck with the same old Kuznets model. The damage caused by the professional negligence of economists is so huge that it can't be calculated. The rents of land, for example, which would help governments to make sense of our boom-bust world, are omitted from government statistics. In fact, the British government has decided to terminate the index of land values that used to be published by the Valuation Office, just to save the Treasury £40,000. 
That index was flawed. It forecasts that land values would continue to rise all the way to 2011. That false prediction was based on economic theories which are, well, rubbish. I warned the OECD's chief economist that because of the holes in their models, they would not see the next recession coming in five years' time. But the OECD's model of the economy can't either confirm or discredit my prediction.